Sifu, how are you? I have been better, but I'm doing good right now. I am uh, just chilling in my studio. Yeah, look at this. This background, yeah. you got uh, all these axes. My guitar right here, you know. Yeah. Sifu, <laughs> could you play anything for us about your experience? Oh, sure. Uh, let's see. I got loaded up. I'm just kidding. Right, so. <laughs> okay. All right, Sifu, let's start with, okay, we saw that Drew didn't have his bag of tricks. Uh, was that an issue for you also? Did you have all of your stuff? Yeah, so that was one thing that uh, they, <laughs> they did not show is I did leave my bag, you know, back at camp. And so that is one of the reasons I didn't play my shot in the dark or uh, play my fake idol, which was so beautiful, by the way. Put put together well. Uh, art class, fifth grade, yeah. thank but yeah, it was it was a defining moment for sure. It really yeah. was well done and uh, could have come in handy, certainly. But, you know, looking at that group that you were with, like I'm counting the votes and I feel like that didn't you have enough people to get rid of Bruce? I feel like there's you, there's Drew, there's there's Emily. Kendra is saying she wants right. to get rid of Bruce. Why didn't it come together? Yeah, I think there was just Kendra. Um, she started to kind of waver on it and then drew also wasn't on board with it and so it just started to fizzle yeah it was very possible we even met up we talked about it i went around and talked to everybody and it was definitely forming but we def you know they definitively knew bruce had an idol so it was mm -hmm. just a really, it was a really tough one and everybody had suspicion i had an idol as well so it was it was something that was crazy during that time we were going back and forth, but it obviously was me, unfortunately. Yeah. See, I feel like that we didn't get to see a ton of like who you were working with in the game. We got to see you having a lot of fun out there, but we didn't get to see uh, too much of who you were working with. Uh, what was going yeah. on with you in terms of your alliances? Yeah, so I actually had an alliance with Mama J. You know, we would talk a lot. And uh, we would connect on certain things. She was there as a coach to me. And also, she definitely helped me a lot. She was like, hey, you know, you got caught sneaking around. You got to calm down. So she was there to calm my fire a lot in certain situations and helped out. So I would say that was a big uh, help moving forward to kind of steer the target off me and, you know, put more of a target on Jay. And, and, uh, and uh, moving forward, it just helped a lot having her coaching and stuff. Okay, we saw a little bit of back and forth uh, in terms of Jay wanting to uh, see you be targeted. W was there a personality conflict there with you and Jay? Not terribly so. I mean, we're both musicians and we both freaking rock. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it was more that she said a few things that were suspicious. And when, in this game, if you get one thing that's kind of suspicious you start to kind of twist and turn on those things. So I think my eyes just kind of went towards that. Even whenever she got back from that uh, uh, adventure, she didn't have anything. And I'm like, girl, you got something. We got to check this out. So I definitely was suspicious of that for sure. I want to go back to the Sean vote. Uh, could you just talk us through from your perspective of how everything went down? For sure. Um, so going into that tribal, you know, it was a little tense because you just, I had a small suspicion that my name might have come up uh, or might come up. And uh, then Sean gets to talking and I'm like, whoa, this is really changing. Even the energy in the room is changing. Yeah. And it quite literally saved my game. And so, you know, Sean uh, exits off the show after his quit. And I take the opportunity to say, who voted for me? Who voted for me? <laughs> <laughs> and because I was just like, there's no way that Mama J would do it. So I need to eliminate, I need to eliminate some people. And when he said, I didn't, I was like, D, J, D, J, either one, you know, and that was on my radar. So, you know, it may look like J was the only one that I was kind of uh, mm -hmm. fixated on, but I was also equally fixated on D as well. Yeah. Okay. And you 100% believe Sean, correct? A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. He had no reason he was leaving. So. Yeah. And then ultimately, uh, then Jay takes the fall. 
uh, and says that she voted for you. Did you believe her 100%? Zero percent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love these statistics, man. <laughs> yeah, zero percent. I had no, you know, it was. The thing is, is D was top of my list and then it was J. And so D, the only reason it wasn't D like working for her because yeah. Julie reflected that heavily. So I didn't really start targeting J until Julie was heavily deflecting and turning me towards J more than D. Yeah. Okay. And then, so you got to the merge and then we saw that you were trying to get Jay's name out there, uh, on the mergatory vote. Um, were you considering writing Jay's name down at that first vote where everybody voted for Caleb? Yeah. So that was funny because it's a great reflection point and something I haven't told anyone. Um, so you hear it first here, uh, I said something. I think I said, oh, this could change the entire game. I said something yeah. of that. Yes. Story. And I was contemplating writing D's name and oh. throwing the whole entire game for a loop. Yeah. And that one yeah. vote would have been enough. It would have been everything. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I do from those things a yeah. lot. <laughs> you had uh, a very big reaction to Caleb being uh, safe. Uh, did you get close with Caleb in the short time that you were with him? Yeah, I did. Um, so just like Emily, I had told Caleb, I said, hey, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. You should play your shot in the dark tonight. I'm mm -hmm. not going to I think all votes, are, well, I think some most votes are going on you, not all. I, you know, I had no clue it would end up like it did. No one, no one could know that. But I did definitely want to work with Caleb. You know, coming back, if he, you know, uh, I think that it was, it just made sense for us to work together. You know, we were kind of on the outs and uh, we have kind of a like energy, you know, where we're fun and bubbly and energetic. Yeah. So it made sense for us to get together and, and start taking people out. Uh, we saw you with Bruce in the beginning of the episode. And it seemed like that you two had a pretty good relationship. What was it like uh, with your time with Bruce? Yeah, Bruce was Bruce. You know, he was Uncle Bruce, man. And uh, I did notice that he definitely takes charge. And uh, he was showing me some stuff about my Tai Chi, which I just listened and kind of took it in. But I was just trying to show Austin something about football and how Tai Chi could work great with in, a, in an NFL. And then Bruce comes in and he's like, well, how about this? And how about my, like, all right, well, you know, we'll, we'll take this in for uh, consideration. So it was fun. I mean, he's a good, he's a cool guy. We heard in the preseason that you said that one of your uh, mentors uh, in terms of watching the game was Tony, and you wanted to bring a lot of Tony into the game. What were some other uh, Tony things that you brought into your game? Tony Vlacos. That was one of my favorite players ever. So I wanted to actually do a spy shack. And that was something that I was working on. Um, and they didn't show all of it, but I was legitimately building a shack that no one knew about. And it was going to be beautiful. It was by the water well. And uh, I definitely got caught once, but I definitely spied and listened to other things and just enjoyed my time. Listen, I'm a big kid out there. I have a yes. good time. And that, that was the angle I was taking. So I, Did you I get anything interesting when you were spying on people, Sifu? Yes and no. It it uh, yes because I saw how close they were without me, and uh, I was like, okay, well, Austin and D are going on a lot of walks, and when I listened into them, uh, it was more of you know, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that together, and we're gonna go out and get wood so we can talk. We're gonna do this so they're connected, and then Austin and Drew would do the same thing. So the observation of me seeing that put me saying, oh, there's probably four connected that aren't with me. But again, it was not as yeah. Uh, Did you have any suspicions that the other people on Reba had found the idol together without you? Yes, because I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'm searching hard. And in Austin's interview, when he found it, he's like, well, if I don't find it, Steve was going to find it. And I was at that tree the next freaking day looking around, not saying I would have found it, but I was definitely in that area. Based off of what we saw in the show, it seemed like that you were 100% with Reba, but would you have uh, been considering flipping to work with Bello at the merge? 
thousand percent. I was uh, actually going to work with Couture is what I, uh, one of the people I wanted to work with. We're 10 minutes from each other. She yeah. lives in San Louis. I'm in O'Fallon, Illinois. We yeah, we did see that her. in the episode that she, had, she, she was freaking out about where you were from. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So I just think that uh, it was definitely, if I would have made it past that, I think I would have gone far and, you know, had a great time and made good relationships. Can you tell us any other stories about your time that we didn't get to see on the show? Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, me, I like to live with a lot of fire and fun, you know, um, in my day-to-day life, you know, pr- positivity and stuff. So I think just doing Tai Chi on the beach every single morning with everybody, bringing them in together, uh, I would like them to show a little bit more of that. Um me being wild and crazy, you know, at camp, they definitely showed some of that, but we all got down to four steps down. We were all jamming out. So my song of the machete, everybody knew the lyrics, they were singing it. So I would love them to show the whole ensemble, uh, you know, a little bit more. Cause that was hilarious and fun. Is there anything that you could have done differently that could have changed up your fate uh, and how you ultimately went out of the game? Sure. I mean, you know, being my authentic self was one of the things I wanted to go in with. So you get, you see what you get. Uh, I think that there were a few things I should have read a little deeper on and made slight adjustments. You know, that's just the name of the game, right? You, you try to read and adapt. And I think there's a few things I did not adapt well to, and that's just how it goes. I live and I learn from it. So yeah. Sifu, uh, how much did it bum you out to not end up being part of the jury in that twist? I was right there. So um, it was a lot of bum, man. Uh, The fire of making it from Merge was enough to hold me over, you know, to not sulk, you know. Mm -hmm. I made the Merge. I did a few, you know, some awesome things out there. So I'm excited, but not making the jury, man. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Sifu, is there anything else that you want to let people know about your time on Survivor? Go apply. Do it. It's amazing. I think that it is a transformative show. You know, it's an amazing physical feat. Uh, starving, go starve, you know, go, <laughs> go enjoy that stuff. But seriously, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. This was something that healed my soul a little bit more. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Sifu, uh, really fun to get to talk to you. Uh, wish you nothing but the best outside of uh, survivor. And thanks for making some time to talk today. All right. Thank you, man. Talk to you later. All right. Take care, Sifu. Bye. All right. Bye.